keyboard, so it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. You just hit the keyboard here. Just hit C. And it comes up with the keyboard. 261 is C. Huh. <coughs> okay. As I said, the first one. In 1930s, late 30s, as an engineer, to, in musical engineer, whatever you want to call it now, uh, came up with the Hammond organ. The Hammond organ is, is based on wheels with little things on them that spin around. When they spin around, they make a sound. That led into the Hammond organ, which then led into the professional uh, B2 and B3. So for a long time, maybe two decades in the world, at least in Central America, South America, the United States, the Hammond organ was the lead instrument. Everything else was secondary. It had drums, it had singers and so on, but the Hammond organ was about this big, pretty heavy. But they put it in the back of trucks for planes, it was a monster. Anyway, let's turn it around. And here is a, a book by an expert on the B3. I'm not sure I want to take lessons. He's looking pretty ugly to me. <laughs> not a very happy guy, but he's evidently the master of the B3. Is there an example of the B3 in there? No. The no, 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 not here. The only difference is you know, an organ, more or less by definition, has three keyboards. Right? Oh, I turned that the wrong way. What, what are they, that keyboard? Well, you, um, I, I know the one's the bass pedal. Right, the bass pedal and I, for your foot. Yeah, and then... Uh, I'm not really sure about the other two because and I've seen people play melody on both two, of them. Two keyboards, yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter. You can they get, be set up Now electronics, you can set them up however you want. Yeah. And that's the thing about a, a lot of our young ones, musicians that we don't understand, it doesn't matter what octave you're playing. Or you can play in this octave or that octave or that octave. The song's going to still sound good. And this is where a lot of guitar players get a little confused. Guitar players read the music, normal music, but they're not playing that. They're playing an octave low. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, you can't necessarily go by the sheet music. This is where training your ear comes in. Yeah. Knowing if you're at 8 or 440 or you're below. Soprano singers are high. Men sing them so low, then your bass singers will be down low. Okay. This is all electronics. In the old Hammond B3 and B2, it was all mechanical. Okay. And your speaker, a speaker that was about this big. And that speaker, well, let me see if I can show you. two things on here. There's two other things that make sound unique. Okay, a sound unique is what they call decay and rise. So in addition to this complexity, now obviously you're going to have to determine this on an oscilloscope. Right? You can't do that with what we talked about electrically last month. So Rise, obviously, is this, decay. 
is that. So each harmonic, generally speaking, you can have a decay and a rise that's going to make the sound unique in addition to the frequency. When we do that ourselves electronically, usually we call it modulate. We're going to modulate, we're going to change it. FM frequency modulation, AM amplitude modulation. But that's inherent in that string, or it's inherent in his fiddle. His fiddle may sound different than Diane's. Everything's the same, but something down here is different. That string is old. Okay? So one of these harmonics might be different. Rise, some of the sheet I think I did, and decay. And this is why we can't buy like, colors. We have how many millions of colors in the computer? We have millions of sounds, right? You have a cello, you have a, a bass, you have a fiddle, you have a flute, right? You have, let's say, the horns, you have a uh, Euphonium, middle, you have the tuba down here. So these, this is what allows you to say that's a tuba playing. That's a violin playing. That's a piccolo playing. That's a flute playing. Piccolo sounds a little bit different than a flute. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because it's a higher pitch. A little bit higher. So we go from 440, we're going up, up that scale. Okay, here's what he did. He came up with these, and I cannot find my book. I'm just going to have to guts it through. Uh, but I know enough about it to, to, to show it, but anyway. We were here when I stopped. The other thing in sound, uh, and that doesn't change the sound a lot, but it, it makes it sound good or bad, or whether, is what we call reverberation. The old way of doing it is taking a wire and making the wire go like so, and that was reverb. <clears throat> a typical reverb is the old time cathedrals over in Europe, Paris, the cathedral and so on. The uh, reverb in a cathedral may be uh, 0 .2 sec two seconds, I think, from the time that it comes out to the time you hear. So you're hearing things at different tones, because it's coming from the ceiling, it's coming from the sides, and so on. So that's called reverb. Okay? And you can set that on most electronic instruments. You can set it to maximum. On some of them, the ones now, it'll say cathedral sound, or say uh, symphony hall sound, or it'll say backyard. Okay? So that's your... Kick in. Yeah. Now the Leslie speaker is what made uh, the Hammond so popular. Hammond and Mr. Leslie, they didn't like each other. For whatever, uh, they fought over certain things. I'm not sure who who won out because Leslie's name stayed on the speaker, Hammond's name they stayed on the organ. But if you bought a Hammond organ for several years, the Leslie speaker probably would come in. So if you listen to what's happening, I'm going to put on the Leslie fast. On a Leslie speaker, the speaker is actually going to go around. Boom, 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 boom. So it can go slow or it can go fast. Okay, so when it gets up to speed, that's where it's going to stay. Okay. That's not really part of uh, the sound changes per se. But again, if you heard all those records made with Hammond B2, more than likely they had a Leslie speaker if they if they mic'd it. Okay? So have any of you heard a real pipe organ? You should have. You know, in that age group. There's so very few churches now that have a real pipe organ. The Catholic Church, I think at Harp uh, in Coppers Cove has one. I don't know if they use it anymore. Again, it's like piano, you've got to get them fixed. Uh, St. Christopher Church across from my house has one. Uh, 
A lot of churches bought into the Hammond organ, uh, so they didn't get pipe organs. The pipe organs were around prior to 1940s and 50s and so on. So. And the pipes, the sound that you got out of a pipe depending on what it was made of. You got steel pipes, you got wood pipes. And how big they are, how tall they are, depends on the sound that comes out. So a little one is made out of tin, perhaps some kind of metal, is going to be a high pitch sound. A very low pitch sound is probably going to come from the big wood one. So what we do is basically do the same thing. You take the C and you take it down. Okay? Here he's got, these are based on, again, the pipe board. So this is a 16 foot sound. That means that pipe was 16 foot. Okay? Then we go down eight foot. That's the same thing we're doing up there. Going on four foot, so we're changing the fundamental harmonic. Okay. And down there, two foot, so these are all white, one foot. So now my organ at home, what that means now is I'm playing, for example, C, middle C, C3, C4, what? An octave above, just like we went there. Okay and an octave above there. C4 is middle C. C8 would be 8. Pardon? 8? Yeah, this would be 880. That would be 1760. Okay. So now, when I hit C here, I'm getting a bit better. Getting a combination of all, all, all of them. Just like we saw there, they are the harmonics too. It can be a fundamental, but it when you get more than one, it can become the harmonics. So now I'm playing, I'm hitting one C, but I'm playing four C. If you like on the violin, when you do a chord, you're hitting two strings, you're hitting two together. Then you have five and a third. Two and a third, and one and three fifths, and one and one third. These are harmonics on that sheet of paper. Oh. Okay. So if you were a ham and organ player way back when, your left hand was always going over here. Well, and you had a right hand on the lower keyboard, you'd be manipulating these two. I did, but I didn't know what I was doing. Well, the book, I, I don't have the book here, but let's go over three primary sounds, okay? One sound, and these all have numbers on them, whether one to nine. So that determines how loud that's going to be. So if you have this one that's way high at nine and this one at two, you're going to have a real strange mix, right? Well, that was what I would do. I would. I would just keep fiddling until I got something that I liked. Yeah. I didn't actually know what I was doing. Well, the old books would tell you. They yeah. would say here, they, they would tell you where it settled. Well, the, most of this was like, you know. So you have like that. basically four families of sounds. Let's set all these here, where you've got this here. Yeah. Okay, so you've got all these sounds here, like so. so Basically, you've got middle tones higher. Or you can take this and set it like this. Mm -hmm. take these. Well, just any combination, those, those slide bars. Right. Will... So you have families that you have a family of sound. Obviously, this is heavy and strong on bass. This is heavy and strong on upper. This would be middle tone, <clears throat> like so. So any questions so far? Let's go over. Does that one foot by itself sound like a blue? 
Like what? The one foot drawbar by itself. Does it sound like a flute? I don't think you're going to get it up. There's oh, okay. there's up there. No, it doesn't sound like a foot. That's a two foot. Yeah. Four foot. Six foot. You hear it going up and down? Oh, yeah. You can hear that. Okay, now, what gave the Hammond, again, a lot of its sound that people like so much was the decay and rise. Okay? So even today on the keyboard I'll bring in next week, We'll be able to show it. Now they do all this. All this is done electronically now. There's no nothing in there that goes around. There's no Leslie speaker. And all they've done with what electrical engineers have taken all that and just put it in electronically into a uh, uh, an oscillator, a frequency oscillator like that. There. So anyway, here's let's take this. One. It's kind of the same that you have on your piano at home. You bought a regular piano, right? So a regular piano's got what you call weighted keys. So you pound the piano, right? An organ and a accordion, you don't pound. No. On an organ and accordion, you play legato style. Okay? But on a piano, you pound it. Okay? So there's a first second and third percussion sound. And that gives you that click. Like on a typewriter, when you type on these things, people, some people like a click.